Uh, hello everyone. Today I have to stop talking through my plan about goals because I've got a very interesting topic about goals as a second part of the series. Uh, and the reason behind that is my attention uh, things in front of my attention are slightly more important. At least I just can't think about anything else. And perhaps it's somehow connected to my basic survival needs. A hence target oriented behavior is is uh, uh, is dragging my attention non stop to that. Uh, so Basically, seeing uh, through my window what happens in Belarus right now, uh, I have found parallels in the Bible and between uh, Christianity, New Testament, and and reality itself. Uh, and I think, I hope, uh, you find those thoughts interesting so where do we begin as usual you know we start with definition uh, and definition of what we're going to uh, describe so I, th I think I think I define several things first in order to make a preface so um, if we're talking about humans and their abilities so, uh, and, and the differences uh, between animals and themselves. So first, what comes in mind is mind. Uh, and the human mind does have particular features and abilities which are not developed on such level among other animal animals. However, we don't know for sure, but like we are um, expecting that. And one ability of a human being mind is self-reflection. The reason behind that is uh, clear because people did live in uh, groups or their history and the group is the key for their survival, so they have to understand their place in the universe more precisely than for example animals who live alone uh, so they have to they have to think about themselves a lot in order to get the um, get the impression and uh, be a valuable member of the group another interesting Part, uh, part of the human brain is understanding of mortality. Uh, people don't understand they will die, at least when they grow older. Maybe kids don't. And for kids, reality is, uh, our future is very little. However, for people in their 30s, 40s and so on, uh, mortality becomes just as real as anything else. And... Uh, also involves particular thinking about that. Uh, one more thing to mention is large number of parameters extracted out of the informational stream for analytics. Uh, what that means? That means like complexity of human beings' life is overwhelming compared to other strictly specialized animals because they live in a group and group is quite chaotic. Uh, they live, they eat everything, and this is also quite cha chaotic compared to, for example, I don't know, wolf, which eats only uh, meat. But th th they've got exceptions, but you know what I mean. So the complexity of a human being's environment is much more higher than for other animals. Moreover, war is getting added up to this complexity is uh, competi competition between groups because like 
if your own group is chaotic, but like somehow you could understand what happens inside of it, and who are the members and what they, yeah, what's their um, the factors and so on. Uh, other group seems completely chaotic to you, like and the ability to understand it uh, all in chaos also requires a lot of a brain capacity. Uh, last thing which I want to mention today is speech. A speech as a tool uh, for transfer and processing uh, of the information. The other use of speech is the creating and manipulation of abstractions uh, in IT, like informational technology in a sense. Uh, then human beings do have religion, or I believe uh, animals don't have, or at least uh, religions we could define as religions. Uh, also, it is interesting that um, customs and uh, uh, appeared in Homo sapiens uh, societies uh, where where Neanderthals didn't have that much. They did have something, but like not as close as hum uh, Homo sapiens uh, did have. And I believe this is because uh, Homo sapiens uh, could distribute their duties among people who have particular talents, and religion is like a uh, sign of the distribution because people create a custom, and that's a shortcut for particular events. For example, if someone dies and no one knows what to do, so they've got a custom which uh, which helps to release particular amount of cognitive resources and instead thinking and creating something they've got something ready to use and they just apply custom uh, to our some case and everything works fine so right a religion and uh, religions are different there are polytheism and monotheism uh, and like something in between however uh, uh, th th again our main topic is not a religion itself however you have to admit that uh, there are particular reasons for existence and development of religion uh, same as for customs among human beings uh, because people need to have a set of predefined features of reality which they could use uh, for operational purposes um, so, our ancestors have noticed that members of the community do have biased behavior patterns, which could lead to our final consequences. So, they decided to create some sort of basic informational structure, which, if, I, if applied on the brain, would do some positive transformation. So, like, if you listen set of stories, uh, then your brain is going to get transformed in a particular way, and perhaps the group survival chances do rise. For example, uh, when people want to eat, perhaps it's not the best idea to eat, eat uh, each other or each other's relatives unless they bloody hungry. Well, bloody is in the literal sense. Um, another thing is, about religion is uh, that the building block is a story and there's a story as a main mechanism of transferring an information uh, and uh, not only just an information but large amount of data uh, it's a sort of zip archive in a sense uh, why is so well I don't know, <laughs> but I think perhaps the story is activating much larger parts of the brain compared to some dry scientific description. 
maybe even mirror neurons or helping to release some neurotransmitter substances or hormones and the person could even feel what the heroes of the story feel. Uh, in this case, the number of stimuli is larger and more, perhaps evenly, distributed across the entire brain compared to scientific paper, for example. That's why when you read a novel all night, uh, but and, and, and you don't feel any uh, exhaustion. Uh, on the other hand, you fall asleep on the first paragraph of the first chapter when start reading linear algebra or physiology of insects and so on. Unless you are so inclined and finding the latter I'm using. Uh, and heroic happens also through the uh, through the all religions is just the same. So, like myths in uh, in the Bible, mind thread is a paradigm to Arabian audience towards pro social behavior and reduce chances they will turn in the opposite pathological direction. So, like Bible is always orienting you towards uh, you have to care about others more than you do care about yourself, uh, which is in my opinion, quite archetypical, because like people lived in groups for several millions of years, and their behaviour and patterns of behaviour leading to particular consequences were the same. So if a person became a very egoistic, then probably chances uh, for that person to live in the group were decreasing, I mean, in a positive way, and uh, the group itself, if it had a lot of agnostic members, also could decrease its chances. Uh, as in survival of itself, so in a uh, group comp uh, competition, if other group is more pro-social, then your group is losing. And that's very important trait. Uh, okay. So God or gods are something, something which is in some mystical way applying particular rules on a reality. What that means is uh, ancestors have noticed that it's quite common that when when there are particular reason consequence connections. So if a person behaves bad, there is no consequence straight away. However, they are following in some time. And our ancestors have decided, okay, so if there is a pattern, that means somebody is behind that. Some yeah, because they see everything is happening for a reason and people are doing something for a reason and if a person decides to do something and does something, there are consequences. So if some consequences are following over and over and over again, that means somebody is wanting to something to happen and that perhaps is going to be some god or large number of gods, depends on the uh, type of your society and depends on ways you are making food and the size of the group. Because, again, uh, plenty of gods in uh, smaller societies because they don't require centralized governing. And uh, the group itself more or less chaotic and everyone has a character. So and everyone has a, some god behind it compared to monotheism and large societies. Uh, they require just one word which applies rules to everything and uh, uh, everything does obey those rules. Okay, uh, Bible. So, <laughs> Christians are claiming that Bible is written by God himself. Uh, so, again, I find Bible as a very high level of abstraction of archetypical ideas. Uh, I find, uh, oh, all right. sorry about that, it's not far along.
uh, it's not just my idea, of course, I just got it from some other authors, uh, but I do stick to it. So, uh, they got themselves, what does it mean? That means the uh, Bible has collected particular or archetypical ideas which could be applied just on about anything, on reality, and uh, the reason behind it is, uh, uh, is what is, it seems like something which is applying rules on reality also has written a book, because rules are the same, more or less. Okay, uh, and the point uh, point of writing a Bible, probably people were growing up like in their 40s or 30s plus, and they decided to create a, a theory of everything, similar as physicists are always trying to create a theory of everything, uh, which would explain most parts of the human life. Uh, So, and another, the thing is need for the religion. Uh, again, human beings do live in a very complicated environment, and they need a housekeeping for informational space. Also, they have to create a verbal reality, and such level of abstraction which would help to transfer information in order to gain a survival, a survival success for their own group. Uh... Another reason is uh, define the consequence, reason consequence description of the reality. As a result, uh, as a natural result of that, is a lowering down an entropy level of the environment. Uh, more reality is verbalized, easier to operate with it. Uh, next thing why we needed the religion is transfer a large amount of information and apply it on as many brains as possible at a time. In theory, it's supposed to rise the survival chances of the group. At least, uh, that was their main task. Uh, information has to be taken in a, as an axiom. You see, uh, due to different biases of the recipients of the information, they could oppose particular cases. Uh, so they need to be forced to believe. Like, you don't have to ask questions, you just have to accept that killing your own brother not the best idea. In the absence of IT, it's very easy to go down slippery road. And what I mean by that? So the problem is, if the only way to transfer knowledge from mouth to ears and only what was seen is a moment in a moment. So it could be that false impressions about avoidance of punishment could lead to a spiral of negative acts, so to a spiral of negative acts, which will lead to very harsh results for the individual and for the society. That's why they mean what they say: God says everything. Do you know what I mean? So, because sensor and processing abilities uh, in humans, well, despite they're quite high among other, compared to other animals, they're quite limited in terms of the informational load of the reality itself. So, they could easily miss important features uh, which will have consequences. So, that's all about religion. What we've got else is evolution. So, as I have stated earlier, living in the groups and splitting uh, splitting duties, uh, one of the reasons why we would were able to eat, to eat Neanderthals and not vice versa, uh, also splitting duties and delegation of authority requires very high level of trust. Uh, and that is leading to the next important part is very high level of understanding 
what happens in others' minds. Because uh, you can't really delegate authority to the person which you don't understand. Because they can abuse it, they can turn it against you, and so on and so forth. Uh, authority itself, also, uh, it's not a human being uh, specific, but perhaps it's a specific for a hunting or predator animal. Yeah, well, not not really. Not uh, I think I think bisons do have the same when the strongest strongest male is protecting others and so on. But uh, in bisons and in gorillas communities, uh, it's a half a male strategy. Whether in human being community, it's not that like completely because uh, the couples are more or less stable. But the authority of the person is rising because of their skill set. And when hard times are coming, uh, a group is looking for a leader with a high compet- uh, compet- com- competency. Because uh, it's going, in theory, it's going to save time in implementing decisions and not ne- unnecessary questions are asked. Whether is it good to do that or not? So, so uh, when it's hard to survive, they find the most skillful person and say, okay, now you take a decision and apply on the rest of us, and uh, we are going to obey, and that's going to raise our chances for our group to survive. Okay. Uh, right, okay. I, I, I supposed to go back a bit, because... What I have to add here is there are uh, physiological mechanisms to endorse such behavior. Uh, So one person is getting selected as a leader. Uh, Evolution is supposed to create particular mechanisms to, um, to reinforce it. So some positive emotions, emotions for reinforcement. When others do obey to that person, that person doesn't does get particular I don't know endorphins, whatever. And uh, and when they admit competence, right? So they when 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 the group is admitting competence of particular member of the group, uh, that member of the group is supposed to feel good about that. So they're supposed to feel, wow, I'm, I'm getting noticed, like how smart I am, and so on and so forth. So that's that's what we are speculating about evolution. Now, what could possibly go wrong with that? Or oh, plenty of things. And the first is uh, psychological addiction. Why? Uh, because we've got a mechanism which is supposed to promote particular behavior, uh, the leader is getting psychological response. Uh, and uh, and what happens at first is number of chaotic situations is dropping because uh, the world is becoming relatively predictable without much energy spent on this analytics. This means like you don't have to care about your everyday food now. You care about some particular abstract ideas, and your food is coming in a table, and your shelter is also provided for you by others. And that's uh, and, and and that's kind of not destroying. I wouldn't say destroying, but like make, making uh, those centers in the brain which are responsible for analyzing chaos uh, be more less be less responsive. Uh, another thing is relative lack of. Or sometimes absolute absence of stimuli about discomfort. So a person uh, losing their ability to cope with negative information whatsoever. Because in the case, we, like in the heavy cases, right, when we've got a dictatorship or some um, uh, tyranny. So in this case, reality is matching with expectation in at least 99.9999% case. What that means, like, not nobody, nobody is giving you bad news, and everything you decide 
supposed to happen. Uh, for example, you apply particular decisions and they go in the way you expect them. At least you are getting presented information in that everything happened in such a way. So as a result, neurons responsible for bad emotions are dying out. And neurons related to a pleasure, they grow like cancer and they and they, 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 they constantly uh, they constantly are craving for new positive emotions. Hence, we are getting psychological addiction. Physiological addiction, well, again, it's very hard to draw the red line between both of them, because in the end of the day, human being is a subset of molecules interacting with each other. But, like, if we are talking psychological is something what person feels, physiological, what happens with their chemicals inside of them? So cells which are responsible for adequate stress response are getting suppressed. Because, like, what's the point of keeping them and using them if they're not needed? Organisms are doing that, right? Yeah, they're doing that with muscles. If you are not using your muscles, they're getting weak. Uh, same with uh, stress resp- uh, response uh, neurons. High level of comfort is also overstimulating pleasure cells which start working at lower levels. So everything what was giving you a high level of positive emotions before, now it's just normal. And that's like... uh, uh, Right, okay. Uh, Yeah, another, another part, important part, what could bring tyranny to the top of the governing is traits of the leader themselves. So some personal traits which contribute to the aggravation of the diagnosis. First, stupidity. So a person might, might, might be very smart in terms of manipulating other people and their loyalty. However, not many would cope with the flatter and so on. The low level of self-control as well. Not thinking in the long run and use tools for solving problems here and now. Violence is a very good example, especially proposals of easy solutions for, would be followed all the way, cause those who are surrounding a leader, a person would chase their own interests, very different from the leader's one, right? So, so they are going to present them information which is firstly valuable for the presenter, not for the person who is going to consume it. And uh, if 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 a leader is stupid enough to don't uh, to not understand that, that's going to bring a trouble. Another important part with the leader and its pathology is an earned privilege, because a person is taken out of the competition. There is no need to reprove competency over and over again. As a result, they are reaching a point. And there's a no way back. Like the, the neurons, uh, neurons responsible for growing a, a competency uh, are destroyed for good, especially if person is in their 50s or 60s and they spend as a ruler for another decade or two. So that's, there you go. Uh, like me personally, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, uh, warned about an unearned privilege and with my own kids I'm always trying to think how to uh, n- not give them any little fraction of an unearned privilege otherwise I'm just going to ruin their understanding of the reality itself. So gaining power not as a result of hard and intensive work but just as a result of coincidence is also an unearned privilege. And uh, this is also related to assets. Uh, yeah, uh, an unprivileged. I mean, gaining uh, power, assets, or position, which is power itself. So, why is bad? Because it's creating false understanding about own hierarchical level and impression of own super competence. Like everything, what you propose is getting approved as the best possible solutions, a solution. All those henchmen 
want to please them. And there is no feedback whatsoever. I mean, there is no adequate feedback, right? There's plenty of latter. There's no adequate feedback. Compared to sport, for example, where you have to either prove the status or lose it. Uh, in this case, parameters are more or less adequate. If you run your mile for five minutes, you can. If not, sorry. Now, what happens then? Violence. Sooner or later, tyranny is, is, is going to be biased towards violence. Because violence, and I'm going to make another uh, definition lecture about the violence, but long story short, so violence is to make the target suffer pain related to emotions in order to correct their behavior in the desired way. But it could suck. It's no way. So, uh, one more thing is uh, unacceptable level of entropy. Because uh, if a person loses dominant position, the brain is always calculating the probability of everything. And... Uh, Oh, you can check my video about neural networks. And the probability of dying is very, very high, especially if you've done a lot of crimes when you were in your position, and then uh, you can't really accept that you're going to live as an ordinary person while you were uh, ruling a few million of people. Okay, New Testament. Uh, and why I have decided to make parallel lines between it. Look, I wouldn't, if I wouldn't feel this situation on my own skin, like when things were happening in the country and when I have seen all those videos where uh, violence went out of control and when the police was torching people and just like beating them up and ah, uh, I felt I felt like first it didn't make sense in the first uh, impression right? I couldn't understand how could that happen to people especially in 2020 especially when everyone has got a smartphone is going to 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 record the, uh, their actions and so on but a uh, few months since it seems like I happened this stuff has happened with people all over, over and over again, and they uh, have even written books about that. And that's why I have decided to just uh, give the my thoughts about that. So, New Testament. Uh, New Testament, I would probably call as a textbook for psychophysiology of the power, of the power, uh, and uh, uh, of the power and uh problems uh, and related so at first we have to uh, th keep in mind that it's quite a high level of abstraction and what would you expect from a IT worker uh existence of a state with with ruling apparatus and uh, because people have experienced, again, as a, uh, events related to the power, they decided to write an instruction with a troubleshooting list and what could possibly go wrong. So we start with the Jesus. So the birth. Uh, birth of the son of the God. Basically, that meant... Uh, that, uh, that meant what? That an idea was born proving the current king is not legitimate anymore because like king is a is, is a what is a god's i don't know person and now it's a son of the god is born what means like current king is becoming i don't know mickey mouse king because son is uh is is gaining all inheritance from his father, his father and the father is God, and that means son is the prince and then king. And the God itself. Because uh, the idea... Uh, the idea of God, as, as I have stated before, is just a set of rules which apply to reality and always following, no matter 
uh, how a person is trying to get away. Right. So, so and, and also, because there is a sign of the God, and this means all other representatives are not valid anymore. So what king does? Chasing all newborns, this is a signal that the king was failing. He's not, he's got some trouble proving own right to rule. Uh, that means, like, he's not competent anymore to rule the reality. All oh, right. Okay. Let me let me shut the window. Yeah, better now, isn't it? Okay. Uh, and and because and because we are choosing leader by the, his competence or her competence in order to take different decisions. And once they don't kind of have a right to rule the reality, that means they. And not allowed to rule anymore. So, uh, chasing all newborns, uh, you, see, you see, this is ultimate violence as a tool of use. Because uh, because killing newborns, it's 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 their crime, right? Because you you are going against the uh, against what nature it was was developing us to do, like we developed to care about kids and kids are our future. And now King is deciding, look, I'm going to kill kids, newborns, in order just to stay in power. And uh, this is uh, this is beyond pathological, uh, beyond pathology. Right, okay. So, so and then that means that the King themselves is very deeply pathological. So the places where King was looking for a kid where all where he thought the son of the god could be born. Uh, uh, he killed all, for example, priests' kids, uh, or, 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 or maybe warriors, maybe uh, judges. Well, I don't know. Everybody else, but the, he couldn't get into the uh, sheep side or where the Jesus was born. And that means also this is abstraction, meaning that the king themselves they could not understand where the ideas that he's not competent anymore were born and why. Right? He was thinking uh, his main opponents on a very high level, right around him, because maybe he started to suspect that, like he's not getting appropriate information about the reality. So that's why. He decided to do some housekeeping. Uh, now, uh, again, I'm trying to squeeze everything as much as possible. If I could sing, I would probably. Uh, <laughs> if that would help to pass large amount of information better. However, uh, zipping up straight away, uh, zipping up what I've got now, because y- you know you can talk for. Uh, ages about Jesus and the life and abstraction, abstract uh, ideas there. Every line is full of them, but I'm trying to be as short as possible. So, life and preaching. Uh, main Jesus' target was poor and weak. And what that's supposed to mean? And that's supposed to mean that, that the rich and powerful do not need God too much because they manage to control the reality to some extent better than others. On the other hand, those who require support like the idea about the incompetence of the king and some god to rule their lives, which they hoped could be much better in such a case. It's like they, they, they give up for God and God thinks about them in better way than themselves. Uh, the number of Jesus followers is growing much, which means people who are in charge and rising in a financial disparity and multiplying the number of poor. This is what creates a social tensions, right? They, they, like, if everyone is looking for a God, and like the majority of the people are looking for a God, uh, that means they sort of not sure 
in their future, in their reality. Uh, next important point is meeting with the devil. Uh, that means that our hero uh, getting such competence in A, understanding reality, and B, human nature, so he could easily abuse power. This is going to happen if the person going to select egoistic interests over social ones, right? So, Jesus understands that fighting for the poor is the mission. Leaving them alone and just using talents given by his own father would be betrayal uh, to his father and standing on the other side. Because now, if he's going against the society and does care about himself only, that means he's becoming a devil. And again, this is very archetypical stuff. No one like two millions or oh, how many millions people live in a group and they even monkey show uh, social behavior and uh, some care abilities about the group. So no wonder that uh, people have noticed. I mean, I mean, our ancestors have noticed when they're writing a book that, okay, that's probably bad strategy to follow. Next trial, okay. I'm, I'm I'm skipping a lot of stuff, but next thing is a trial. So accusation, uh, accusation was simple disapproval of authority. This is just uh, raising raising a question of competence of the king. So he just put that under under the question. Jesus just said he's not ever. Jesus had said that the king is not a valid governor. This act is destroying the social status of the king in the hierarchy of the people and related, and it relegates from height. Okay, because he says, "Look, is our king? He said, I'm, I'm a king's son, and my uh, father is a god, and he's just a I don't know." Self, self-proclaimed um, king, which uh, so what does it mean? That that means like the hierarchy where a king is on the top is just destroyed. It's neglected. Who are accusers? This is classical stuff. Not the king himself, but his close henchmen. They are ready to do just anything to keep kings in their own positions. Hence. And such cruelty. So, they understand all vulnerability when this idea spreads. So, what they do, they compete in brutality. And that's what I see through the window. I see, look, I see the, the, like, the torture of the people who are getting imprisoned. They are beating up, they are mobbed, they kill. Uh, if person gets uh, in a position and saying, uh, and and saying like I'm not working for the, for that boy. I'm, I'm only proclaiming that I'm against the violence. They're getting sacked straight away. So all those who do support current governor, they compete in violence towards people who are against. And this is very again archetypical idea. They have to prove that they do just about anything to keep their governor in power. And that's what happened with Jesus as well. When the, uh, those close to king came and just blamed him and say, look, we want to. Uh, and, and what's the sentence? Uh, look, uh, Pontius said, look, uh, I, I, I don't see his crime activity. And again, Pontius was uh, from the Roman Empire, so he didn't really care about whether a king is king or that was their own alternative hierarchy. Uh, no, the uh, accuser said, no, 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 leave the charge in place. Because the case is the most dangerous for the current ruling group of the ruling class. Now, crucifixion. Uh, to get to the heaven means to stick to the pro-social strategy despite 
harm. So, like, even even Jesus was tortured and 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 killed, the idea can't be killed because, well, the idea was growing two millions years and due to evolution, and now you can't really just kill one person and expect all uh, psychophysiological mechanisms will die in all people. <laughs> so there's no point fighting it, like, right? Uh, and then there are two criminals in this. Uh, story that one has accepted that, like, yes, pro-social behavior is better than the opposite one, and another said, ah, nah, nah, it's nothing interesting here. But that's another part, another accepting, not accepting pro-social behavior, that's another video. Then what happened? Resurrection. Oh, that's the idea of resurrection, is that proposal behavior is impossible to kill. Uh, it is very deep in our psyche, even if Tyranny is torturing and killing the possessors of the idea. It's just impossible to eliminate. And look, like here in Belarus, there are some politicians or in prison. Some are dead. Some are chased away. There is no clear re uh, leader, absolutely whatsoever. However, it's absolutely not stopping. The rest of the people uh, are protesting. They keep going on the street. They keep saying, look, they say, it's not what we want. We don't want tyranny. It's simply because they are on the God's side and opponents are on the devil's side because their opponents are chasing the their own interests and the interests of their governor compared to the people who just would like to live free. What we've got as a takeaway here. So first is pathology, right? So pathology... Uh, what kind of lesson you have to learn from us is you have to uh, you have to develop a skill to recognize the pathology because uh, because in majority of the cases power would lead to the to pathological changes in the person related so particular factors are playing roles and I have stated before however however you have to you have to uh, remember it's very important to recognize where the person is stopping being pro-social and start uh, following devil's instructions in their head. Uh, yeah, and you have to cure the reason, not the symptom. So, so this, this, I don't know, I have to, what, what I mean by that is, is much more effective to work on the root reason in other fighter than competent person has gone. Uh, personal responsibility, personal responsibility is, uh, you see what happens. Uh, current situation in Belarus is because the majority did not care, did not pay attention. Despite they did know, including me, what's going to happen. Others are really supposed to take a lesson though. Also the responsibility on the very one. I've got, oh yeah, I've got another thing about responsibility in another video, so please check, check that out. And the Bible is direction of behavior. Uh, so leave by Bible is a good strategy, I reckon. Like, there's nothing wrong, it's written there. Unless I've seen, I mean, not killing anyone, no, no, no stealing and no lying probably sounds good, all right? At least the theory, in theory, it's, it's saying it's supposed to work fine. Uh, and uh, keep connected, yeah, so I would like to talk how to find a tyrant, uh, tyranny, respect and fear and uh, each phenomenon interesting to prepare. Thank you very much for your valuable attention.